Good morning, y'all. Good morning. May I approach? Yes. May it please the court, your honor. Yes. Sir. Before he's Mr. Antoine Dukes, he is here on warrant numbers 2023A203, 0015115152, and 153. Your honor, those charges are trafficking in morphine, 28 grams or more, criminal conspiracy, and burglary in the second degree. Your honor, he is represented by attorney Willie Brunson. We are here this morning for his motion for a bond reconsideration in this matter. Mr. Antoine Deuce was detained at the Winsburg County Detention Center since November 10th of last year. Okay, tell me about his record. Your honor, he has no criminal record at this time. I thought he was in drug court. Uh, Your Honor, my client does not have a conviction. Have you never been in drug court? No, sir. Okay. So, I heard the facts from the court that he asked that we need to put the facts in the record. In my understanding, he's facing charges in Sumner County, Lee County, and Orangeburg County. Uh, that's incorrect, Judge. I'm advised that he's facing county uh, charges in Williamsburg. Um, obviously, we're here. He's got a failure to stop for blue light and siren in Sumter. And in Lee County, he has the exact same charges that he has here. And those warrants haven't even been served because about Orangeburg County I'm advised that those don't exist anymore. Now, I don't know how true that is, but that's the information that I received. What can you do? Hey, Your Honor, um, we don't have any information as of yet on the Orangeburg. I have been confirmed that he did have the same charges out of Lee County in regards to this involving a pharmacy out of Bishopville. And I believe that's one of the pill bottles that went in the facts of the case yesterday that was found inside the room. Okay. So give me, put on the record facts in this case. Hey, Your Honor, back on October 23rd of 2023, at around 3.42 a.m., officers with King Street Police Department received a call for a burglar alarm that was going off at 411 Thurgood Marshall Highway, which is Winsburg Pharmacy, located within the city limits of King Street, South Carolina. Officers then called for the key holder to come to the building. Once they got the building cleared, they were able to review the surveillance footage. On the camera footage, officers were able to see a silver four-door Kia pull up to the facility with six individuals that were wearing masks and gloves. Those individuals exited the vehicle, one emptied a red bag full of paper and medication bottles on the ground behind the vehicle. The individuals then were seen in a potted plant which was in a large ceramic vase from the back of the vehicle. It is believed they used that plant to break the window through the drive through at the Williamsburg Pharmacy to gain entry in there. More footage shows and still photos show that the individuals, once they got entry inside the pharmacy, made their way to the shelves, raided the shelves. Once they got in there, opened up a tan and color metal cabinet and were able to retrieve medication and items from there. Officers of the Kent Street Police Department enlisted the help of SLED in this matter. The agent Lee met with Special Agent Wright in regards to this matter. They were able to look at footage that had the license plate that was on the car that was even captured in video footage. Um, during the investigation, there was a license plate reader on Highway 378, right out of side of Sumter, South Carolina, and they were able to see that vehicle along with another vehicle traveling 378 right behind them. Officers then obtained several surveillance footage from different local stores in the area, from Carolina Shell, Auto Money Title Loans, and Winsburg Funeral Home. On that, you are able to see that same silver in color Kia car as well as that gold and colored Toyota Camry that was driving behind. <coughs> they also got video footage from Redmond Richardson Funeral Home. They were able to see the individuals pull over, stop in the parking lot, exit out the vehicle for a moment in time, and then inside in the parking lot of there, they were able to find a pill bottle near the building. Ultimately, officers were able to track down the driver of one of the vehicles, the car belonged to Mr. Dukes. In talking with Mr. Dukes, as well as his parents, they were able to obtain a search warrant. When that search warrant was executed, they found inside the rooms different pill bottles, specifically pill bottles from Bishopville and other items that were marked in regards to this pharmacy that led them back to these individuals being the one involved with the break-in here in Winsburg County. 
You know, this is just a preliminary report that we have so far. Furthermore, they went into the fact that officers attempted to conduct an interview with Mr. Dukes as well as co-defendants. Um, Mr. Dukes did not provide any identifying or exculpatory information. Um, while he was in the interview room, there were pictures laid out of two of the co-defendants. When he saw those pictures, he made the statement that telling the officer that you are on the right track. <coughs> Surveillance on all of Bill, especially his father, Toyota. That is correct, Your Honor. The Kia belonged to a Mr. Nassim Johnson out of Sumter, South Carolina. Um, when officers spoke with him, he stated that he did not want to report that the tag had been stolen off his car. He did not want it to lead them down the road to believe because he was driving with his car uninsured. So that was the reason his delay in reporting the tag was stolen off his vehicle. Yeah, but, but my information gave me yesterday that, that behind that car that was going, traveling together was a gold so Toyota. That is correct, Johnny. And then that Toyota license plate came back in his father. Is that not correct? That's correct. Okay. And he's charged with Trafficking more than 28 grand. Yes, sir, Your Honor. It's 25 and 40 years. With a minimum of 25. Okay. Plus burglary first. Burglary second degree, Your Honor. Second violence. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Your Honor, Mr. Dukes is 19 years of age. He lives on Excitement Lane in Sumter. He lives there with his father and his two brothers. Your Honor, he went. Uh, he attended Crestwood High School up through the 12th grade. Uh, at the time of his arrest, he was gainfully employed. He was working at McDonald's in Manning. Before that, he was working at Walmart in Manning. And quite frankly, if he had not been arrested, he would have been working at... And that's where he would have started uh, if he had not been arrested for this incident. Your Honor, um, a little bit about Mr. Dukes. So when he was in the 11th grade at Crestwood, he was involved in a pretty catastrophic accident. In fact, he was involved in a, a motorbike accident where he was essentially ran over by a dirt bike at full speed. Uh, a result of that accident, he suffered pretty substantial injuries. In fact, he almost died. Uh, he was on a ventilator for a week in life support. Um, the result of those injuries, he ended up having and for that I'm advised that he has been in contact with the Department of Mental Health and they're currently working on him in that regard. Your Honor, we requested a bond hearing today um, because we take the position that my client is not a flight risk and that he is not a danger to the community. Your Honor, he's 19 years of age. He was gainfully employed. He's never lived outside of South Carolina. Um, in fact, all his family's from Sumter. So he's not a flight risk judge. He's retained counsel. I know I can't act as a surety, but I can assure you he'll be in court when he's required to. As it relates to a danger, Your Honor, he's never been convicted of a felony. Um, He's got that one failure to stop for blue light in Sumter is pending, and that was from October 3rd of 2023. But, but most importantly, in regard to the danger aspect, Your Honor, he lives with his father, who is currently in fact, he's been a member of 28 years. So now he's the first. And, and he's president in court today, and this young man does have family support. Um, his father is here, his aunt is here, his siblings are here, and they're all in support of him. Um, in regard to these charges, Judge, I have not attended a preliminary hearing in this case yet, nor have I received any discovery. But what we know or what we learn is that six individuals pull up to a pharmacy in a gray Kia. 
and this is captured on video outside of the pharmacy. That the same six individuals exit the car, gain entry to the pharmacy, and leave with what they say is prescription medication. Get back in the same vehicle and leave. Now they say, in addition to that, that later that night, that same Kia with the perpetrators is seen on the roadway being followed by a Camry. Well, that Camry came back to my client's father when they ran the ID. So, four days later, they decide to go to his house and, and see if they can look around. So, my client's father said, sure or someone there gave them permission to search the car. So they did. Then they went and got a search warrant to search the house. When they searched the house, they found clothes, shoes, gloves, and pill bottles. Um, you know, based on that, they made the warrants and arrested my client. Now, I submit to you, I know that this isn't the trial of the case, and I know I don't have discovery or attended a preliminary hearing yet, but they found empty pill bottles in his house. This young man almost died less than three years ahead of that. Oxycodone is probably something that he took regular. So the fact that they found empty pill bottles of oxycodone in his house doesn't mean they came from the Williamsburg Pharmacy. I submit to you that if they found anything in a car that they claim he was driving four days afterwards, there's no telling who had been in and out of that car or what they could have left in there. Um, so we take the position that that is not indicative of any crime that was committed in Williamsburg County. Uh, nor does the fact that they found empty bottles of oxycodone in his home indicative of anything that he's done in Williamsburg County. And, and probably uh, most significantly is the fact that they say the gray Kia pulled up. The occupants of that Kia went in and committed this crime. Well, they didn't say anything about a, a brown Toyota pulling up or anybody from a brown Toyota committing this crime. They just simply say that a brown Toyota was seen on the roadway behind the Kia that they claim actually did it. In addition to that, um, they charged my client with trafficking. They haven't indicated in any form or fashion that they found a single drug, not a, not a drug at all, much less drugs to equate to a level of trafficking. They charged him with burglary second, Judge, and there's no evidence that he entered a building. There's no evidence that he was even one of the six that went in. And they charged him with conspiracy. There is no evidence that there was ever a meeting of the minds that involved my client. So it's a circumstantial case at best. Um, but as far as a matter of mitigation, Judge, this young man was arrested on November the 9th. He's been in jail for 77 days. Um, we respectfully ask the court to issue a bond in this case. And, and the basis of it is that he'll be in court when requested. <coughs> We're prepared to defend this char these charges. And there is absolutely no unreasonable danger to the community that can be put forth uh, that we believe the court should rely on in denying it today. His co-defendant, who had similar circumstances on yesterday, I'm advised, received a $30,000 bond. Yeah, but his co-defendant yesterday did not go in, based on his testimony, the co-defendant did not participate or go in um, the pharmacy. But I was told yesterday that he said that he later um, confessed that he participated and the co-defendant didn't. Well, well, Judge, as indicated before, I talked to the prosecutor just to double check before we had this hearing. And she indicated to me 
that there is no such statement. Well, well my client so admitted to. And what is he made by the Lee County charge? He hadn't even had a chance to have the warrant served. They so hadn't been served with the warrant. What because about he, the orange bird charge? None, Judge, because he was arrested here, and I believe those charges in, those, in that other jurisdiction stemmed from the allegations of law enforcement here. So the warrants arose after his arrest here, and since he is in the detention center here, they can't even serve the warrants. Now, I spoke with um, Lee County Police Department. And there's a, a Lieutenant Stilver, Stiver or Stalner. He's the individual that's handling the case. And he said, yeah, they do have those warrants. And that if my client is made bond here today, then he'll be transported and then they can serve them. At which time we can receive them and see what they allege and see if they've got any evidence that uh, incriminates them, and, and then we can begin to move all the cases. Do they got a detainer on them? Does Orangeburg have a detainer on them? I'm not advised that Orangeburg does. I, I'm not sure. But I do know that I confirmed with Lee County that they do have three outstanding warrants, and they are the same ones here from a uh, pharmacy break-in there. Okay. So on the traffic aspect, I was under the impression yesterday at the hearing that when they searched his house, they found pill bottles with with trafficking amount of morphine in it, oxycontin, from the armor, I mean from the Lee County pharmacy. Well, your honor, they matched those numbers that, that were not prescribed to him that came out of that pharmacy. If it pleases the court. If it pleases the court, Judge. Yes, I've got a copy of the search warrant right here. And that's one of the, that's actually the only document I have. And I can pass it up for your examination. And if the court will notice that on. That's the return. This is the return. It says empty pill bottles, empty pill bottle, empty pill bottle of oxycodone. Um, where is the original from? Do you have one that's signed by a judge? Oh, the search warrant is here, Judge. This isn't the original, but it's a copy. Is the return signed by a judge? This is what was left at the residence. So his um, family gave me a copy of this search warrant that was left. You got one? It was a and, and that return. Okay. So this is the warrant. information uh, according to the warrant it stated that there were 366 pills that were taken at 15 milligrams per dose at the break-in so because I was on impression yesterday that the actual oxycodone or some morphine derivative was found in his house to search one that's not true And I beg the court to do your honor. You have not arrested this search warrant. What officer signed the search warrant? Your Honor, I, I believe what, what uh, that was a search warrant signed by an officer from SLED. 
as as the affidavit it reflects that is South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Okay. And and Your Honor, if I might, so so we take the position obviously that the return is if if pills were found at his home that it would be required that they be put on the return. Um, clearly that says three empty pill bottles of oxycodone. <coughs> And my understanding from yesterday's testimony, and I may be wrong, that the, that the bottles contain the label of the pharmacist from, from Williamsburg. And, and clearly, if they were labeled, if, well, I, the pharmacist will come in and testify that these bottles that I had on my shelf that were not the suspect bottles that were my bottles. And then that's how they can connect this together. And then the weight. Um, now, if that's not true, how, um, if there are empty bottles and the bottles are, are made out of him from another pharmacist, that's a whole different ballgame than empty bottles from the pharmacists that are not his and the pharmacist will testify when I close shop. That night, these bottles were on my shelf with these labels on it. Somebody broke in, and those bottles are missing, and they were found in his house. And that's a whole different ballgame. I agree, Judge, and I don't think that's the case. However, what I do believe, though, may be close to what you're referring to, is that, and again, I'm only operating on the sworn affidavit that the sled officer gave in order to obtain the warrant. But what he said was, in this warrant that you have in front of you, is that they looked at the tag on the Camry. It came back to this address and, and his father. They went to the home and asked if they could search the car. That, of course, consent was given, that they went in the car, searched it, and that they found a, a tag of a bottle, I mean, I'm sorry, a label from Bishopville. And that's what he used to get the warrant to search the house. So, in all candor to the court, the only thing that references um, a label, an identifying label, is an alleged label in the car from the Bishopville Pharmacy, to be exact. And, and again, we take the position that this is four days and anybody could have been in and out of that car, and that's a Bishopville matter. Um, but that there's absolutely nothing in this case connecting my client to the anything that was taken from Williamsburg. Hey, Your Honor, if I may, Mr. Dukes was identified based on the surveillance footage there. Officers did attempt to talk to Mr. Dukes. Mr. Dukes was asked about his involvement in the pharmacy in King Street, Mr. Duke stated he was able to give our officers information about the co-defendant on yesterday, Mr. J. K. Wynn Washington, staying outside. Mr. Dukes was asked what did they what did they do when they left the pharmacy in King Street? Mr. Dukes advised that they went left, they rolled back rows, checked the medicine, and threw some of it out the window. When asked what rows they were on, Mr. Dukes advised that he did not know the names of the rows that they took. Lee County has those three warrants, and I was advised that Orangeburg dismissed as to all three of the brothers. Now, um, Williamsburg had uh, two of my clients' brothers arrested on these charges as well, and um, where are they now? They those got dismissed. Those They're, cases have been dismissed, Your Honor. Yeah. So, so, so how many people have been arrested? On So right now there are 
three that were detained, Mr. Antoine Dukes, Mr. Jaquan Woods, and Mr. Jaquelin Washington, who was here on yesterday. Um, arrested before Mr. Alexander Dukes Jr. and Antonio Dukes. The charges against those last two have been dismissed. So the only so young man I had yesterday, this young man and the, and the, the Jaquan the, Woods. And what's his staff? Is he in jail? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Who represents him? Uh, attorney Virgil Bob was just recently appointed. Okay. And you don't know whether they got a detainer or not? No, sir, Your Honor. Well, well Judge. If your honor saw fit to grant bond in this case, um, I I just spoke to the lieutenant um, chief in, in Bishopville is on vacation, so I spoke to the lieutenant about nine o'clock this morning as a follow up, and he pulled the file and he said, "Yep, we've got these three warrants," and I explained to him what we were doing today, and um, he said that. If a bond was granted in this case, then he would be transferred to Sumter Lee, at which time they will have a bond hearing virtually. Um, and, and that is the extent of my knowledge as to whether a detainer exists or not. But as an officer of the court, I can say this, that if there is no detainer, then, and if he's released, then the first place he's going is to Lee County. The Bishopville had a warrant served because we we can't move. No, and then he's going to be in two. He's going to be posting two bonds. Um, and I'm in Bishopville the next term over there. But I need to take this under advisement and get all this dig it out at one time. Um, and piece of title bond, I'll set a global bond if you want to, versus setting it in. in he posted pays and bonds for whatever gets out and goes and he's got to do all that over again. And I'm, I'd like some more information about the investigation in this case. Because then, from, you know, um, and see if they, what drugs they really do have and what pharmacy they came out of. The information I was given, they hit another pharmacist in Holly Hill. And in those charges, of opinion, it, it was the same scenario. And they hit three pharmacists, you know, Bishopville, King Street and Holly Hill. But, but Judge, so here's the problem. The problem is if Your Honor takes it under advisement, there's still no way for the warrants to get served and for him they to ever- bring, That's crazy, they need to bring the warrants over here and serve them. They, they, that's what they told me, they can't serve I, them. I'm fixing to change that, that's <laughs> crazy. They can come bring it over here and serve it just like they can in some, but they just don't drive over here. Oh, okay. I'm fixing to make that phone call. Yes, sir. <laughs> That didn't make any sense. They too lazy to drive it over and they come bring the warrants so we can grab all this other one instead of having all these here. Well, that's what I was calling trying to get done. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get that done. Yes, sir. Um, and they got any in, in Orangeburg County that needs to get done too. It's the judicial economy, we, you know, I need to figure out what's going in the charges he's facing and what really happens. You know, it's pretty serious to be breaking into three pharmacies and stealing oxycontin in the traffic amount. And so I'm just interested in how, what testimony, what they got, proof trafficking amount. Because it's my understanding what if nobody's recovered any drugs. So the whole testimony is that from the pharmacist who's gonna come in and say what he had or didn't have. And it's doable, but it's gonna it's some hoops they gotta jump through. A lot of them just. So I'm gonna get those warrants served, um, and then we can deal with. It. You know, I can take it under the hospital. We can, I can deal with this out in Lee County too. And there's no charges in Orangeburg. That's fine. I just needed to know, because you know, not you could be jumping from county to county to county doing all this again. That's right, Judge. And that's what I had advised the family that we would have to do, and they were prepared to do. Okay. Well, I'm going to call Lee County and tell them to come serve the warrants over here today or tomorrow. Um, and, then, and then I need you, 
They need to get, you need to get discovery from SLED, whoever's doing this case. Well, you got a complete follow-up went on. You need to, to, to give it to Mr. Brunson. Uh, where we can figure out what they really can and can't prove. Um, and, you know, if, if the PC was the, was the camera following and they got it on video, it's one thing. But the information I got is your guy gave a statement that he did it. Right, he was there. And I assume that statement is recorded somehow. You need to see it. Yes, sir. I and agree. see what he really did say. That may change, you know. You need to know that before you know how to defend it. Yes, sir. I agree. So, so that needs to happen for money. Um, so, Judge, how do, how do we uh, go about following up with a, a bond setting or a bond hearing after the warrants are served? Well, then we can. I can have him transported to Lee County. We can do. If it's not anything in, in Orangeburg, then we can do it in Lee County. Same we'll circuit. Bond here and it give you time to figure out what's going on in this case. Yes, sir. Because then that's going to be, I'm in Lee County, 19. No, it's really after the holiday, the 20th. Yes, sir. February 20th. Yeah. And then by that time, you should have discovered from Lee County and here. The warrants should have been served, and then we need to find out whether they warrant warrants pending in Orangeburg County and get them served. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you haven't got stuff by Monday, I'll be in something on Monday. You call me, and if you got a problem getting something, you let me know, and I'll get everybody on the same page and get discovery done. And they got a statement from your client, you need to see it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Honey. This is Christian News T.Y. I'm Tony Conyers. If there are any newsworthy events in Williamsburg County, we will get them to you as soon as possible. If not, you can follow us on Christian News T.Y. Facebook. You can follow us on YouTube and you can follow us on our website.